Gronk, 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 gronk. It's Derby Week. We'll talk to him about that. The NFL Draft. His first impression ever of Tom Brady. What was that like? The Kelsey Jam, Lombardi spike, tight ends taken <gasps> in said draft. Lots to get into with the Gronkster. I have a super boost for NBA action tonight. That's right, people. We got a little Steph, a little Anthony Davis, a little LeBron, and I think this one is it. It's a good boost. Legit. Like, legit good boost. Thanks to FanDuel for letting me pull it off. And FanDuel's very own Ken Rudolph will answer my burning derby questions. Seven hours in an uncomfortable hat talking sweeties to prep bros up in their manicured eyebrows and Vinnie Vines, all for the greatest two minutes in sports. Yay, whiskey. Is that a thing? Do they call it Derby Week? Because they're a brand. Is there a thing that we call it like Super Bowl Week? It's the Super Bowl for horse racing. The halls here are crazy exciting. The vibes are high. We are headed to Kentucky for the festivities and the celebrations. Little mint julep action. What is it? Woodford Reserve sugar and water? Sugar and what? Club soda? Oh, Marissa, do, do your homework. We, we might literally have Bobby Flay whipping up some uh, mint juleps for our little show. Speaking of little, I know so very little. My, uh, my education, my cram sesh kicks into high gear today. What to wear, what to eat, how to party, where to sit. It is all happening. And sure, we'll learn about the ponies too. The fillies, the thoroughbreds, is that right? Ken Rudolph gives me all the details. And he has some long shots and dark horses for your Derby FanDuel Sportsbook pleasure. That's right. Our Sportsbook FanDuel, the number one leader, is where you can go and place bets. Super easy. Have some fun. Have a nice little Saturday with us. Now, all, all, all while I'll be click clocking around in five inch heels, it's not even going to be sunny that day. I'm going to be going over there. You think I'm waiting in line to place a bet there? No, I'm headed right to the Sportsbook on the app and getting it done. Now, in the NFL world... We got a little uh, break of news this morning. What does it mean? The Packers decide to give Jordan Love the old extension instead of exercising his fifth year option. So now we've got 22.5 million with 13.5 million guaranteed. What does it mean? This um, is a little maneuver to allow some flexibility. That's it. Green Bay is covering their bases since nobody knows what Love will look like as a starting quarterback just yet. They think they know. They're confident what they have. But they don't have to commit to the $20.5 million that's already fully guaranteed under the fifth-year option while still keeping Jordan Love under contract next year. So Love gets a little... Uh, Comfort, a security blanket, some insurance, and some guaranteed money for 2024. And if he crushes it, and this is certainly incentivizes him giving it him giving it its all and his all, uh, I'm sure a longer term, term extension does find a way to get worked out as the season ends anyway. So I would say this is all good things. It doesn't really, I was trying to find the underlying meaning of it all. What do they mean? What do they, does it mean that they like him or not? Uh, but it's sort of a creative solution by the Packers to give everyone some sense of flexibility and security going forward. Now, the 2023 NFL Draft is over. As we know, the grades, they've been handed out. Everybody's dishing out love and who did the best and who sneaky did the best and all of that. But I think there are still a few things that happened in Kansas City this weekend that we are sort of underreacting to. Let's hit it with the underreactions. And I want to start with a wild triangle of intra-division trading that's going on right now with the NFC North. Like, everybody's getting along and all things are gravy. I talked about this a little bit before, but it's really starting to hit a different level. It's, it's sort of, it's very ancestral over there in the NFC North. Can we not hear me? Is that what the problem is? What's going on? Oh. Okay, well, I did not know that. So let's talk about the intra-division trading going on in the NFC North. Past two seasons, the Packers, the Lions, the Vikings, they've continued to break all the unwritten rules, and they're just wheeling and dealing with each other. The Lions are open like crazy. The Bears, though, have kept their distance a bit from the whole thing. And while you might say, who cares who you trade with, you need to do what's best for your team, I do think we're underreacting to this a little bit because with as neck and neck as these NFC North teams are right now with Aaron Rodgers being gone and it's anybody's to sort of grab potentially, one of the players involved in these trades could end up being the deciding factor when all is said and done in the entire division. So let's take a look, guys, at the complete pandemonium that has gone on and starting with the Vikings. We all remember this. They acquired eight players in the fallout from various NFC North trades, four as a result of deals with the Lions, four from the Packers. They are loving the NFC North, most notably tight end TJ Hawkinson at the deadline last year, but they also landed starting safety Lewis. Uh, Lewis. So that's good, and uh, that all happens there. Four from four. 
uh, from each squad, and the Lions added six players. Let's take a look at like, take a look at them. Jamison Williams, who they landed at 12th overall last year. Uh, we have that. That was a trade with Minnesota. Brian Branch, what did they do to get him? Well, they moved up in the second round with Green Bay to snag this year. This is very lannister -y. I'm just going to put it in those terms. It's very cross-pollinating. I don't know. And their potential starting quarterback in the future, Hendon Hooker, who they grabbed after trading Denver, uh, one of the picks that they got from the Vikings in the TJ Hawkinson deal. Ipso facto, connect the dots. Let's move on to the Packers here and just show you a little bit of what they did. They grabbed Christian Watson in the trade with the Vikings. They used the pick Detroit sent Minnesota as part of the Jameson Williams deal. So Lions and Vikings, I don't want to hear, you, you know, you crying about watching Watson tear apart your secondaries. You were both complicit in this. You made this happen. And then the Packers drafted two more receivers this year as a result of that Brian Branch trade. So the majority of Jordan Love's targets this year are going to be guys from the other NFC North teams that they were handed to them? Like the guys that were handed to them via proxy, via that? Like what? Via this weird trade, ancestral osmosis? I'm loving this. And that's what's going to make it a fun storyline to sort of track throughout the year. Imagine Packers fans. If Jordan Love throws a pick to Brian Branch to seal the Lions division when it was close down to the wire last year, or Lions fans. If Hawkinson or one of those Packers wide receivers scores a game-winning touchdown on them or the rest of the division as a whole, if Hendon Hooker goes on to become a star for the Lions a few years from now, there's going to be so much this. You did that and I shouldn't have traded. Why did we do that? There's a division where there's so much finger pointing that's going to go down and we are absolutely living for it. Uh, this season will be a fascinating case study in who got the best in the world of each other and of these trades. So I think we're underreacting. To that. And maybe it's normalized and maybe it's cool and maybe that's the gift that Game of Thrones and the Lannister family gave us in this whole thing. That's just my thoughts. Now the next thing that I do think we're underreacting to this week is what has happened to the fullback position. I was scrolling. By the way, Twitter, does it no longer matter who I follow anymore? Like, well on Twitter, like I go on the, I got the, I got the check mark thing go, but even before that, on the like the page where I'd scroll for like, tweets from people that I follow, it's just random random stuff I could ever ask for. Like an, like when animals attack, and there's a bunch of like political stuff, and like I'm like I'm here for sports. That's your algorithm. That's was that it really? Uh -huh. Yeah. That that'd be a Your're good animal. segment to hook up put up hook up my algorithm. But it's nobody I follow, and I'm like, who's this random girl? Like and, the, and then I don't know who she is, and then there's no reason for me to have her on my. So am I on other people's pages too then? Yeah. Okay, that's a good trade-off. Okay, I'll, 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 I'm fine with that. So here's what I noticed. Somebody I do follow um, very much is our friend Brian Baldinger, who once came on our show, and then we were told he could never come on our show again. But there were no natural fullbacks taken in this entire draft. Great point, right? Uh, that got a quote tweet, and a so sad out of one Kyle Hughes check. And it is significant because we've seen so many fullbacks make big impacts on the league. How can one not be drafted? And I know more teams are spreading things out, but guys like Juszczyk and Patrick Ricard, Pancake Pat, come on, they've, they've shown that there's still very much a place for the fullback in this le league. Endangered but not extinct, right? And while this is a depressing time for fans of a school, uh, you know, old school football and loving that and the fullback in general, there is a bit of a glimmer of hope here. Because if you noticed before I said that there were no natural fullbacks taken in this draft, but there was one guy, one dude drafted as a fullback despite playing mostly on the defensive side of the ball in college, uh, this club-handed maniac rocking number zero is named Derek Parrish out of Houston. He was taken in the seventh round by the Jags with the expectation of moving to fullback. So he's going to have a chance, guys, to carry the world and the torch of the position going forward. And based on what we have learned about him in these past 24 hours, I got to say, I think he's up for the task, people. He's 6'1", he's 241 pounds, he's a ball of muscle, he trains with boulders, he trains with boulders. It's always a good thing, a little feather in the cap for these guys who, come on, what is this? Are you are you a, a Polish guy named Mario from po like a, the, the eastern part of Poland where I'm from? My, my dad always watches those world's but man, strongest band competitions just, just for the red and white flag. Okay, he runs a 4540, he benches 425, he has a 21-inch neck which equals to Keo Spikes, by the way. Uh, and he once won a competitive eating event by demolishing a seven-pound steak. 
Now, we saw what I couldn't do with donuts. Can you only imagine? When he was asked about what his strategy is, everybody, he said, quote, I was literally taking two ounce cuts and swallowing it like a pill. He added, I showed up hungry. That was his answer. That hunger translates onto the football field. It really does. He has the goal of becoming one of the most versatile players in the league and even said that he models his game after Project Pat and use check. So while the fullback position may have taken some hits over the past couple of years, I think Derek Parrish might be the guy to breathe some life back into it. So shout out to fullbacks for not going full extinct mode on this. No natural fullbacks in this draft though, according to Baldinger, who we'd love to welcome back onto the show at some point. NFL media, just putting that out there. Finally, uh, I want to take some time to talk about a story that might have gotten a bit drowned out in all the other news this weekend because this guy deserves his share of some spotlight and love. The Texans revealed that wide receiver John Mechie, who was diagnosed with leukemia last July, how incredible is this? He has been a full participant in offseason programs, and he is working his way towards a potential return to the field. Mechie was uh, Bryce Young's top target, one of them at Bama in 2021. He was drafted by the Texans in the second round last year, even after he tore his ACL in the SEC championship game. So the news of the diagnosis of the leukemia, of the adversity, of this awful thing handed to him, uh, came in the midst of recovering for his, from his ACL. But Mechie, he kept showing up. He kept coming to the facility while getting treatment. He had a really positive attitude. Everyone says that and never wavered despite everything that he was going through. And uh, Coach D'Amico Ryans had this to say about him just recently. Take a listen. When you talk about a guy like, like John Matchy, just meeting him in person, right, hearing his story, and then meeting him in person, like, it marries up. Like, outstanding young man, off the field, great energy, always around. Every time I seen him in the building, huge smile on his face, no matter what adversity he's faced, right, he's attacking it with a smile, attacking it with the right attitude, and it just solidifies the type of person that he is and the type of people and the type of players that we want to add to our team is guys with that type of attitude. It's so perfectly said, and he's the type of player and the type of person you cannot help but root for. I don't care if you're a division rival. I don't care if you were against him at BAM, whatever it is. I just wanted to make sure that we took some time this morning to celebrate this amazing news of overcoming adversity, of having the right mindset and doing so. And we're we are we're in the John Mechie business here on Up and Adams. We are fans. We are wishing him best of luck in his continued recovery, in his journey. And I can tell you right now, I might be uh, getting a little misty the first time we see him break out the crimson crane in the, uh, the old NFL zone. And from everything we have learned here on the show about John Mechie, I really don't have a doubt that that's going to happen. You heard what Ryan said to say there. Uh, we, of course, here for him and wishing him all of the best. So a little light on that this morning. We're going to take uh, a break. We have Ken Rudolph in studio to tell me about the Derby. What do I need to know? Who do I need to place a bet on? I'm a little nervous to walk up to that window. We've got all of that. Also, Rob Gronkowski on right after this commercial break. NBA playoffs like never before with FanDuel America's number one sports pick. That's right. We're number one. Join FanDuel today and get $150 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose, make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. And you know what that means. Oh, boy. Listen. Is it time? You and I went in the lab. This is a collab, all hands on deck effort, and we got the Conrad check of approval in the morning meeting. You heard it. He said that this is good. We wanted to do a boost because we are, this is our 15th parlay. This is our 15th parlay as a show, as this stupid face and that stupid sports book with that stupid thing that says, do this, and then we never win, okay? We never hit, we never hit, it never happens. So we have super boost delicious thing this up, okay? Here's the deal. I'm 0 for, 0 for 14. We all know this can't continue. We all know it cannot go on. And I kind of like what's going on right now with the playoffs. So this is the 15th time will be a charm. FanDuel has agreed to help me boost this. And I, you t before we show it, it's pretty, it's a generous boost. It is. It definitely is. Because all these things, the odds, it, it, they're all likely to happen. Well, They've here all they happened are. more times than they haven't. Well, happened. let me take you through it then while we're here. Jesus, Lakers, Warriors. Uh, we took a swing with LeBron scoring 20 plus points. Okay, so here's why I picked that because he's done that five of his six playoff games so far this year. 
Braun, I became friendly with Rich Paul. Do not let me down on this one. <laughs> I've got Steph Curry scoring 25 plus. So he's hit that mark in all seven playoff games so far. And of course, he's coming off that 50 spot, game seven against the Kings. He's going to keep it going. It's beautiful. He gave that speech, blah, blah, blah. We, we're into it. We're into the narrative. And Anthony Davis, 10 plus rebounds, okay? He's averaging 13.7 a game in these playoffs so far. So these odds are getting boosted all the way up to plus 100. That's pretty good. I feel good about it. <laughs> I feel good about it because I kind of, I didn't stew too long. Do you know, that, you know what I mean? It was just like, yeah. okay, this is it. You felt good about it, and you, yeah. When you overthink it, I think when when things get over, you know, the overthinking happens. That's when we get in trouble. But I love how you passed the, uh, you know, you made sure you mentioned how Conrad and I were both yeah. involved too, so it doesn't yes. all fall on you. That was yes. that was well done. Well, we are an official partner of the NBA, and you are an official partner of <laughs> Kay Adams. So I just figure that would be that would be the way to get it done. So that's it, and hopefully with this boost. For the love of God, 0 and 15 can't happen. I don't even know what what the payment for that would be. We don't even have yeah. We won't even be here tomorrow. We'll be traveling to the Derby. So if it hits, champagne on whatever Southwest flight where I'm sitting in the back with a crate of chickens. They're gonna get doused with the champagne shower if this thing hits. We appreciate you, uh, Hamilton. We're gonna take a short break here. I want to take a break and we're gonna reset and come back with Rob Gronkowski after this. But head over to FanDuel Sportsbook. Have a little fun if you want. We've got a boosted parlay for tonight's action with the Warriors. Emily. Ooh, the Gronk spike. That's the start of it all. We'll get into Kelsey at Kelsey Jam and all of that with our next guest. He's a four-time Super Bowl champion, the dog dad of Ralphie, and our beloved FanDuel family member starring in a new Kentucky Derby commercial. Rob Gronkowski, how are you? I'm good. You just made me laugh. The dog dad of Ralphie. <laughs> That's what our producer wrote in there. You are the dog dad of oh, said Ralphie. Thank you much. That just made my morning. <laughs> Where are you? What are you up to? You're in L.A., I hear? Yes, I'm in L.A. right now. I was just in Vegas with the Fox team for a little retreat. Um, now I'm here in Vegas. Camille's going on Ridiculousness uh, today. Whoa! Actually, she's the show, so I'm here to support her. And, um, you know, just chilling. What's your, are you going to go to the set for Ridiculousness? Uh, yes. You know, it's, I've been on it once before, but Camille's been on it like, you know, 20 times already this year. She's been doing a great job. Her episodes actually just came out a couple of them last week and, uh, she hit it right out of the park, but she's filming more right now. And, uh, just love this show. Love what, uh, Rob Deerdick is doing as well. I love that. We got a little Rob Deerdick reference in before we even get into anything here. Missed you at the Met Gala. I can't believe you've never gone. How come? Yeah, I've never been to the Met Gala. Uh, I would say the reason is I'm not big time enough, so I never oh. got the invite. <laughs> never got the invite. That means you're not big time enough. All right, Kay? No, yes, yes, you are. You're physically big time enough and big time, big time enough. What's that? Uh, did you watch the draft this weekend, my friend? I watched a little little bit of it. Uh, the first like ten picks of the draft, I was flipping back and forth between the lightning game um, and the draft. So, yeah, uh, it, well, it's really cool what they do. Just make it so glamorous. It, it's just it's an episode in itself. Uh, the NFL draft. Um, it's a really cool. Um, all the things that they do for the players. Yeah, and then we were there in Kansas City. Kansas City was incredible host space. They crushed it. It was awesome. And then the tight end position was really interesting. I'm going to show you where some of these guys shook out since you saw a little bit of it. These are the tight ends taken in the draft. Now, we, of course, know that there is a kid named Baby Gronk on this list. But I'm wondering, is there, is, did he stick out to you? He ends up with the Raiders. What would you make of that? Yeah, so he actually does stick out to me because of, of the name Baby Gronk, uh, which is Michael <laughs> Mayer. Notre Dame. I remember about three years ago, actually, I was hearing about him. Everyone went, everyone was hitting me up like, yo, there's a guy in the uh, in college right now at Notre Dame named Baby Gronk. Uh, he's playing just like you. And uh, he was only a freshman. He went in. I think he was a true freshman. And he went in to Notre Dame and just made an impact like that. Uh, so I've actually heard about him three years ago. And now here, here it comes fast forward to three years later. He gets drafted to the Oakland, um, the Vegas Raiders. Yep. Uh, under Josh McDaniels, so I think that's a great fit for him. Um, knowing that I was under Josh McDaniels for about uh, ninety percent of my career uh, when I was in New England, um, he was the offensive coordinator. Quarter, he was the offensive coordinator there, so I think he's going to be very successful. I think he's a he's kind of a two way tight end. Um, if he can block, okay. uh, 
in in the uh, in the scheme for Josh McDaniels and their offense. I think he's going to do a good job, um, especially in the play action part of the game. Yeah, they started calling him Kentucky Gronk because at his high school he was so dominant and he was putting up all of the crazy numbers. Uh, and then when he went to Notre Dame, I and mean, he's the all-time leader in receptions by a tight end. And as you said, McDaniels has a beautiful history with tight ends uh, shining and thriving. But those Darren Waller shoes, those are pretty big to fill, man. Yeah, that is some uh, big shoes to fill. Um, I, I believe that, that trade, when I saw Darren Waller go, I was kind of very surprised because I just know how much Josh McDaniels loves to use uh, tight ends in his system. So I couldn't believe he made that trade, actually. But he actually he actually went to my other coach, um, Brian Daba, uh, with the New York Giants, and he loves to use tight ends even more. So watch, I say this, watch Darren Waller have a year this year. He's going to okay. have a year. This year. What does that mean? He's a, he always has the year, like a, the be, like he's going to take over, like he'll be the best tight end? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be up there this year. Uh, Dayball is gonna find find a way to use him, utilize his skill set like no other. He's gonna be all over the field, but he's gonna have a year. I'm saying like a year where he has a year, a pro okay, bowl year. Okay, but he's already had like a pro bowl year, an all pro year. He's one of the best two <laughs> yeah, tight ends. The last two years, though, the Did last two years he's got a couple injuries and stuff. Uh, you know, he wasn't on top of his game, but this year I believe uh, he's gonna come back and he's gonna be a Pro Bowl caliber type player. But Pro Bowl caliber player, but not break your single season touchdown record of 18. No, no, that's not going to get broken. <laughs> no, no. That, that won't be broken, all right? I'm just, making, <laughs> I'm just making sure. Now, you bring up Michael Mayer, and I like that you pay attention to him because he, he went in the second round. And, you know, you're there in Kansas City. You know what this is like. And all these players, it's all about hope and celebrating. And then some of them slide out of the first round. It happens. It happened to you, right? You got taken 42nd overall to the Patriots, and it ended up pretty well for you. You got to go and, and win a bunch of Super Bowls, and you were in the right spot, and you, you developed and evolved as a player. You would, I probably wouldn't rewrite that history. What's the advice you would give to, like, the Michael Mayers, even the Brian Branches, the Levises, who sort of ended up going not where they thought they'd go, but hopefully where they should be? Yes, I actually saw that. I noticed that the Will Levis guy, he uh, he slipped out of the first round and went into the second round. And um, all these other guys that, you know, were hoping to be first rounders went into the second round. Well, let me tell you this right now. You get the same exact opportunity to succeed in the NFL if you're the first pick of the draft mm -hmm. all the way to an undrafted free agent. It doesn't matter where you get drafted. That's not your legacy one single bit. Your legacy starts when you get to the facility, when you get to the practice fields, when the game starts. That's when it all kicks in. And it doesn't matter one bit where you were drafted. So if you slipped, no matter what, if you went down, if you didn't get picked, well, guess what? You have an opportunity to shine, to show those teams that they all messed up. You have an opportunity to shine um, and prove to everyone that you belonged in the first round or wherever you thought you, you should have been drafted. But truly, the draft does not matter. It's just all about the opportunities, and everyone has the same opportunities across the board once you get into the NFL, once you get into training camp. I mean, you're not going to be an undrafted free agent and shine at training camp, and they're going to be like, oh, he was undrafted. We should cut him. No, they're going to be freaking yeah. just ecstatic that you're an undrafted player doing well in training camp because they have you for three years on minimum pay. That just helps out the salary cap tremendously like no other. You're a but hero. Yeah, Make the best of it no matter where you were drafted, and it doesn't matter where you were drafted. And here's a fun fact, Kay. I was actually at the draft, and um, I got invited to the draft, and I slipped out of the first round, but I was the first play, and it was the first time they ever taken, like, more than, like, the top five guys to mm -hmm. the draft. So um, there was a lot of us. So I was the first player to get drafted the next day in the second round ever in history. So that's a pretty cool fact. And then how did you handle that? Because we saw, like, Brian Branch, he shows up and he stayed. And most of those guys, like Will Levis, they all flew home. And he want like, Brian Branch wanted his moment on stage still. Yeah. I mean, I had a possibility. I had a thought in my mind that it was definitely possible I was, I was going to go in the second round. So that was yeah. in my mind before I even got there. Um, and I just thought it was really cool to be invited to the draft. So I don't know why these guys go there. Then they fly home. I agree. If they don't pick in the first round, well, then why'd you even go to the draft? You know, like, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but like I said, you're going to get the same opportunities no matter what, second round, first round, undrafted. And um, 
And then on top of it, um, once I got drafted, like I was kind of disappointed, you know, I didn't get picked. Uh, the Bengals took a tight end, 21st pick overall, and then no one else took a tight end in the first round in my draft. But I was mad the first day. But let me tell you, the second day, once my name was called, <laughs> it was the best moment of my life. You know, my dream has come true that I was drafted into the NFL. I totally forgot it was even a problem at all that I wasn't drafting the first round. It was just one of the best moments of my life, and it didn't matter one bit that I dropped. And then you guys had that family huddle. We've all seen footage. You get drafted to the Patriots. You go to New England. Now, you know, Bill talks about, like, when he met you and you fell asleep on the floor and all that stuff. But do you remember once you were a Patriot, walking into that building, what it felt like or even what Bill said to you? What's the first thing Bill said to you? Um... I don't really recall like what the first thing he said to me, you know, walking into the building. But I would say that just a generalization of everything um, that is just repeated over there is to get ready to work. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like you're cracking jokes right away, right when you walk in the building. It's get ready to work, you know, uh, get ready to work on the field and also off the field, you know, study film, go, go out there and and be in well uh, conditioned to be in great shape. So you're out there and you're not uh, gasping for air yeah. in between. So uh, just get ready. That's the motto there. Get ready. I mean, it's crazy because you get drafted. I'm just thinking about it now. Brady went, had already three in the bag, right? So you find yeah. out you're going to meet Tom. Like, had you met Tom? Yes, I never met Tom before. And I actually remember that moment uh, meeting him for the very first time. I was actually on the training tape. I was getting my ankles taped. I was getting ready for practice. And uh, he just walks into the training room and uh, he introduces himself to, my, uh, to me. And he goes, hey, I'm Tom. And I was like, hey, Tom, nice to meet you. I'm Rob, your new favorite target. And you don't even know it. <laughs> Did you actually say that? Oh, but I should have. <laughs> I should have. I was thinking of it, but I should have. That's amazing. Hi, I'm Tom. I'd be like, oh, my God, you're the best thing in the world. That's insane. That's amazing. Okay, so well, listen. My first, my first pass, that's, that's when it got really interesting is I'm out at practice. Yeah. And, like, you know, the first 10 minutes of practice, you're just warming up. You're kind of jogging through your first couple routes to warm up the body. And I have a little slant route. It's just three steps, uh, and then you and then you slant it. And uh, I'm just sitting out there. It's probably like a 60%, uh, you know, full speed route. So 60% so of full speed. And uh, I'm just sitting there and it's Tom. He's about to throw me the ball, my first one ever. And I'm shaking. I'm shaking already. And then he throws it to me nice and softly. And I caught it. And I just felt so successful just from <laughs> catching up and warm up when I was 21 years old. And then you went on and won four rings with them, which is so insane after that one pass. And we saw yesterday Aaron Rodgers on the OTA field throwing a beautiful ball right in the hands of Garrett Wilson, who probably felt that same thing, like, oh, my God, this is it. This is success. So Lamar's taken care of. Aaron's taken care of. I want to ask you about DeAndre Hopkins, because a lot of people talk about him getting traded. And he posted this on his Instagram yesterday. I see everybody tell me to stay. Who said I want to go? Who said I wanted to leave? I'm out here working, baby. Should he be in Arizona? Should he go somewhere else? What, where should he go? Oh, man, he's all over the place. But let me tell you, I was super cool with the other ones. Well, Lamar Jackson, I said he was going to be staying in Baltimore yes. when you asked me. And then Aaron Rodgers, whatever, a couple months ago, you said, where he, where is he going to land? And I said the Jets, so I'm two for two there. You know, two for two in the quarterback world. You know, you got to understand the quarterbacks. You know, you got to be on the same wavelength as them in order for them to throw you the passes. So uh, you got a little special feel for them. But uh, for DeAndre Hopkins, now he wants to stay with the Cardinals. He's in a he's in a tough situation because he's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. I think he got hurt, you know, the last you know year or two. So that's always a liability in, in the NFL world. And also he is a very expensive contract for about what 23 mil 24 mil right he's getting paid there. so no team just wants to take him on and just have to dish out 24 million dollars like that um but uh on top of it you know you got to look at his track record i mean unbelievable player i feel like he can get open at any time and 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 even in a freaking what is it called uh where you make a phone call, a phone booth. He can even get open in a phone booth. <laughs> that's how quick. That's how quick he is. But uh, 
Yeah. I really do. I think he's going to stay with the Cardinals. Really? I don't think he's going to take on his, uh, his salary or else I think he would already been traded. It's either the Cardinals or the Buffalo Bills if they yeah. if they move on from Diggs. It's a thirty million dollar cap hit this year for Hopkins, so it's cr- it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, no one wants that. Yeah. No, but if you're the Bills, you're trying to win a Super Bowl. Everyone's barking about Aaron Rodgers drinking beers and singing songs at the stupid Rangers game the other night. Like you got to be aggressive. If there's one team, it's the Bills, right? They draft the tight end Kincaid in the first round. That'll help. But their passing game in October and on was 25th passing game in the league. Like they they need a little spark there opposite Stephon Diggs and company. Yes. Also, I think DeAndre would will get traded if he agrees to restructuring his contract as well. Well, I think that will be a big component to it. All right, this is this is. I mean, you're the Gronk Stradamus over here. You're making these calls, and they're happening. So that's uh, incredible. You also told me that Travis Kelsey would need no advice with he was doing his Kelsey jam. You said he's got this. It's fine. There have been videos all weekend wrong, long, wrong and long. He's uh, he's officially hit his peak, right? Let's take a look at some of this. What did you make of this? Beer bonging the Lombardi, then spiking it. Yes, yes. Travis is a legend. I told you that he needs no advice. I've hung out with him. He came to Gronk Beach uh, when it was in Vegas last year at the draft, and now he, he had Kelsey jam. So I just want to give a shout-out to Medium Rare yes. because they – they throw Grunk Beach and uh, they threw uh, Kelsey Jam. Um, and I told you, he needed no advice. He came to Grunk Beach and he was ready to roll. All his dance moves, all his antics, all, all everything that he does, which is wonderful. I love it. He brings the juice to the table. And he's always bringing the juice to the table, whatever he's doing right now. So that's why I knew he needed no introduction yes. uh, to, to, to the party game of hosting a party. And uh he absolutely dominated it. Um, I was on FaceTime with him during the party too for a minute or Amazing. two, and uh, yeah, he was he was very energetic, and that's what it's all about. He brings energy. He brings the juice to the table, and when you bring juice to the table, you're always good in whatever situation you're in, and that's what he does. I do think you taught him something, though. Even though you're being very humble and modest, that Lombardi Trophy that he spiked was a replica. He had yeah. a fake one made. And I think that he wouldn't have had it up here, Gronk, to do that if it wasn't for the example you set here after your Super Bowl 53 win, buddy. Yes. Well, when he spiked that Lombardi trophy, I was in shock, too. But then I had to put it together. I was like, all right, that had had 100 percent definitely had to be a replica of a trophy. I mean, that's. That's basically kind of trying to destroy the trophy if you're spiking it. So I knew that that was a great move that he did yeah. that. You know, he chugged the beer. <laughs> it was basically like the Stanley Cup. Or, Girl, I uh, didn't get that dent. You're out of it. Yeah, that, that, that was Jordan Edelman's fault. He threw I the know. pitch. Yeah, he threw, he the, threw pitch. the pitch. True. Yeah. But, you know, Travis got a lot of grief for spiking that Lombardi. And a lot of people said Tom Brady literally threw the real Lombardi yeah. off of a boat. So why is he not getting that much grief? What do you make of that controversy? Yeah, no, there should be no grief. I mean, it was a replica <laughs> trophy. He probably bought it, too. I have some replica trophies. I buy them. I think they're like twelve hundred dollars. So if you you can do whatever you want if you purchase your own uh, Lombardi <laughs> trophy. It's, it's good sage advice from Rob Gronkowski. Okay, we're going to have a little fun before you go. Uh, you are nothing but wonderful positivity and love for everybody. So our producers thought that they could t- we could take a look at some people having interesting weeks around the world and see which of the five famous love languages, okay, they could use right now. Now, of course, I'll tell you this. The five famous love languages, Gronk, are words of affirmation, saying nice stuff, spending quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Does that, have you ever heard of those before? I've heard of them. Yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> I like to get Camille on to see which ones. What's, what's your love language, Gronk? Uh, I would say, uh, like, snuggling. Snuggling? You know? Oh, quality yeah. time. Physical touch, very cool. Okay, so let's let's start with this. NFL executives around the league, they were quote unquote annoyed with how much praise Eagles GM Howie Roseman got during the draft. Peter Schrager said this, your Fox friend, what kind of love do these jealous executives need right now? Oh, I love Peter Schrager. He's a great guy. I think it's definitely not receiving gifts because they, they basically have everything. Yeah. 
they, they received plenty of gifts, but... Uh, Just nice words. Yeah, they need some physical touch in oh, their life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they sure do. <laughs> yeah. U UGM. That's what, that's what needs to happen. <laughs> UGM's jealous of of Howie Roseman. Allegedly, need need a little need a little yeah. uh, need a little effect, a little TLC, just a little something. How about Taylor Swift? She's going through a breakup, but she's still on the road, selling out arenas and kicking ass. What kind of love are we giving her? Oh man. She's absolutely destroying it. I, I think she's at the top of the game of love right now because she's loving what she's yeah. doing. She's putting on these three hour performances. You don't put on three hour performances. I heard singing 44 songs without loving it. So I'll just say acts of service because that's what she's doing for this world. She get She's acting of her services and putting on shows for three hours long, which is ridiculous. Yeah, Gronk, we love it. How about Morgan Wallen? I don't know if you're a fan but everyone loves him and he had to cancel a show recently. His fans are upset, claiming that he didn't show up because he had a couple too many waters before the performance. Gronk, what kind of love does he need right now? Oh man, too many waters. Well, he needs a, he needs not physical touch, but he needs a physical IV then. Okay, uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, receiving gifts. He needs a gift yeah, of an IV. Gifts. There we go, exactly. All right, I love that. All right, last one for you. The Boston Bruins, my friend. Oh, yes, that was a tough situation. I mean, uh, most wins. Most yes, wins in NHL it, history. It happened with the Tampa Bay Lightning as well in 2019 when they had the best season of all time. And then they lost in the first round. They got swept uh, for nothing in the first round. And then to see the Bruins, I mean, that was a tough situation because the whole city of Boston, all of New England was behind them, you know, thinking that they're going to win the cup. And I thought they're, they had a great chance of winning the cup as well. So they're going to need some. All of it. Quality downtime to get over it. Quality downtime. What's the best way to get over a loss like that? In the rare times that you've had that happen? I mean, the thing is, you gotta still look at it that it was a very successful season. I mean, what they did all year long, I mean, you can't really put your head down, but you gotta just take some time, uh, you know. You gotta show the appreciation for all your teammates and everything. Uh, show each other some love for the long season that they just endured and just how successful they were. But uh, just some quality time with your family outside outside of the hockey arena and uh, with the guys and uh, go, on, go on a vacation somewhere where the sun can just, you know, take all those feelings and just zap them out of you. Zap out the feelings with physical touch, with words of affirmation, with receiving gifts, the love languages, with the they snuggler, the dad, the dad <laughs> of Ralphie. Listen, we're going to hold it down at the Derby for you. We know you're not going, so enjoy it. whatever you're doing in L.A. Good luck on Ridiculousness. We will watch Camille crush that yet again. And maybe at some point, I mean, Mother's Day is next week. we got to get Mama Gronk on. Uh, she's coming on for sure. Mama Gronk is due to be on the show, and she will be super excited to be on the show, <laughs> and she will bring the juice. She's ready. Amazing. She will bring the juice. We appreciate you. Have a good week. We've got no Gronk in the Derby. We have a Forte, though, former Great Bear. Forte's in pole position, right? He's like the favorite. It's pole position. Is that what that means? I don't know what that means. I don't really know. What is pole position? FanDuel is the only sportsbook app where you can bet the Kentucky Derby. That's right, the only one. And right now, all customers get a no sweat derby bet up to 20 bucks. That's right, you can get up to $20 back if your derby win bet doesn't win. Head to FanDuel and get your no sweat bet in for the derby. We'll be back with Ken Rudolph to talk about Forte winning it all. Four days away, that's a good answer. Four days away from the Kentucky Derby, and we are taking the show on the road up, and Mint Juleps will be live at Churchill Down starting on Thursday. There's no person I would rather talk to about the Derby than this guy. This is FanDuel's own Ken Rudolph. We call each other player when we uh, come and leave the studio. Was that in player? I need, I need help. No, no. I really need help. You're gonna be fine. So this is like me cramming for a, a AP chemistry final. Like, I need to like really get my stuff together. All right, well, here's the thing. Um, you've done all the big sporting events, especially just did the Super Bowl recently, right? Yes. So you know like what that's all your about. Your Super Bowl. Exactly, right? This is not a sporting event. This is a cultural event. Oh boy. Right? right. This is a grown up amusement park. Okay. This is for adults. This is I call it grown folks business. Because <laughs> we're we're betting, right? And yes. we're enjoying ourselves in adult beverages, we're eating, we're dressed to the nines, we feel great about ourselves. What's that rule? Look good. 
feel good, yes. feel good, you play good, play good, they pay good, right? Okay. So all this goes into going to the track. It it's is, just it's about how you look, enjoying it's about yourself. food, it's about the culture of it, the experience mm -hmm. of it, and then there's this FanDuel Sportsbook app, which you can mess with if yep. you're too scared like me to go to the window, <laughs> but we're gonna tackle that, you and I, in yeah. just a little bit. I do wanna show the post Position. Yes. Forte, who's considered the favorite, has yes. the 15th post position. That's a good luck post, position. Yeah. Is it really? There's been quite Why? a few winners from 15. Why? So it used to be a situation where they had two gates. Okay. okay there's 20 horses going to go into this race. And they, and they had two separate gates. And they had an auxiliary gate. And the auxiliary gate was kind of the, the last five or six horses. And they kind of had the advantage of not being stuck there in a weird spot. Now they're all in the same spot. They're all 20 going together. 15 just a good spot to break from for that horse. They'll get a straight shot at the track, okay. get a chance to get out. The problem when you break, there's 20 horses. Imagine running a marathon. If you're running like a half marathon or anything of that nature. Ken, are you, are you joking? <laughs> yes, I actually did it, but I have run it. Right, so when you first take off, everyone's crowded, right? Yes. At the start. Same thing with these horses. They're all jockeying for position and trying to get themselves in a good spot to be comfortable. And so everything's, it's madness when they first break out of the gate. It's crazy. Okay, so it's crazy. So you just saw, so these are the finalists, right? And you, there's a couple guys that you like. We're yeah. talking about what the vibe is. You look good, feel good. Mm -hmm. There's some confidence with that. Who we got? Who do you like? Confidence is everything. Thing, right? Mm -hmm. Come on now. So there's a horse called Confidence Game. Uh, he's my pick. He's it's number two. It's too 12. long of a name. How do you figure? Four syllables is too much. What are you talking about? Four taste Confidence Game. Right? You, when you announce it, it's like, come on. Mm. Come on. It was like, okay, you're right, because Gronkowski was perfect. Yeah. Three syllables is. Three was nice. Oh, two is great. Okay. Two. Right. Okay, go on. But the so, horse is like just him? really talented. These okay. are all young horses, and we're projecting. Okay. That's the whole thing. We're saying, I think this horse is going to improve by blah, blah, blah on this day. And so he's just been training. He's a really nice horse. He won a really important race. The race he won was on a wet track, so I mean it was raining all day. Okay. I forgot to tell you, they're expecting rain Friday and Saturday. That's what I hear. Bummer. What well, a buzzkill. Yeah, a little bit. It's yeah. a tiny bit, but it's still a good party. They can't rain on that parade. It's impossible. Got it. So you like confidence game. You told me last time about mm -hmm. Forte. Is there another mm -hmm. one you like? Well, the other horse, and it's kind of two things. My favorite basketball team, the Sacramento Kings. Oh. <laughs> and um, and my best friend's last name is Barnes. So Kings Barnes okay. is the horse that I think is the speed. Now, okay, I was going to say, were those the reasons you like this horse? Well, because I like that little I would name, too. Horse. But okay. I think that's important for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Names are so cool, and they've all earned the right to be here. So if you like one of the 20 horses just because of the name, that's perfect. Because they all belong here. This is not a random drawing where they're like, hey, hit you come show, here. Hit they show all is kind it. of funny. I like something, I mean, disarm. See what I'm saying? Eh, these are all kind of. That's an old got, Smashing Pumpkin song. Some, you like that? Sure, disarm? Sure, sure, disarm me with a smile. There yeah, you go. Of Look at you. Uh, Forte we love. How about Forte. Angel of Empire? That's an awesome horse. Okay, tell me. About that's it. in my top five. Really? Yes. That horse is incredibly consistent. And for some strange reason, he never gets into trouble in the races. That means he's so good and so versatile, he avoids all the traffic and the trouble because he's so talented. So the jockey just moves him out of the way and he goes wherever they want to go. And when it's time to go, they push that button and he takes off. He's incredible. What are the physical attributes of these horses when I'm there on Saturday oh. that I'm looking at when I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my money? Really? Yeah. Well, we're not... I don't think at that level where you can look at the most important God. part of the horse, which is the boss <laughs> 98. I'm going to pretend that I'm at that level. The most important part of the horse is the caboose, the oh. backside. Okay. That's the engine. I call it the boss 98. That Got is it. where they get everything going. But you have to have experience in looking at that to be able to determine if that particular backside is more muscular than another. So what right? am I looking for? On, like, am I, is there any tells, are there any like tricks in when I'm there? Or do I already know going in, this is the horse I want to bet on? Both. You need to have a plan. Okay. And you need to stick with your plan. Okay. No matter what. Horse racing is a microcosm for life. You need to have a plan and stick to that plan and have some confidence. But you also need to be able to adjust a little bit time to time. If you see a horse that you really like, but you're watching the horse before the race and they look like they're completely out of sorts, okay. right? You're there extremely composed, mellow on TV. That's not true, but okay. That's what the horse <laughs> is supposed to be doing. Okay, really, they're not supposed Just to be... Just supposed to be chilling and relaxed. If you see a horse and they're doing all kinds of stuff and they're... Uh, you don't want that horse in the race anymore. Because really? they're, they're, they're wasting all of their energy now. When am I putting in this bet before the, like, uh, you see, I, I will see them out there, like, hanging out before? You know, they, they walk around in a place called okay. the paddock. Yeah. In the paddock, and you may not want to go down there because it's so crowded. You'll be up in the suites or in the box. You can see everything. That's right, Can I yes. will. <laughs> and so they'll walk around for maybe 15 minutes, okay. 20 minutes in the paddock. That's them getting prepared. They've trained for that moment. They school them in the paddock now. That means they get them prepared to come out and have 140,000 people screaming at them. Yeah. Horses get crazy sometimes. Yeah. So they have to train them for that moment, right? We rehearse 
our shows, we rehearse everything, they rehearse this moment. Is there a horse named Xanax? Because then that's the one that I would. <laughs> that has not That's yet the one that I would created. bet on no, because it sounds yet. like the one, that's the personality trait I'm looking for, someone who's You're gonna be so surprised. On Just a like muscle you can relaxer, tell, Ken. You were, like we've seen athletes yeah. at every different level and you've yeah. been doing this a long time. It's the same, horses are athletes. It's the same exact thing. When you see an athlete out there, you know just by the way they're walking that okay. that's an athlete. You can just tell. So confidence game, Angel mm -hmm. Empire, Kings Barnes, who has the best chance to be your Giacomo? Your, ah. like, those are, those are sort of favorites, but is there a dark horse? Because you made that call that I just saw on YouTube, yeah. which was hilarious. That was good times. Yes. That was good times. Um, well, I'm hoping that Confidence Game is, I think he's gonna be half the price. Giacomo was 50 to one, Okay. but I think Confidence Game will be 25 to one, and I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Okay. I'll, I'll make all the money I need to make, and I'll be happy, and woohoo, yay, good for them. Tell me this, so I'm thinking it's, when I'm picking a horse, it's a third the name, a third <laughs> the horse's demeanor. Yeah, yeah. And a third, what, what, what's the vibe of the jockey? Like, is that pretty fair? Like, I wanna, like, a hawk kinda has to work, or is one, what's the most important thing? What's well, the best piece of advice It depends upon our me? approach. So my approach is I'm a handicapper. So I look at the numbers and all the data, and then I actually handicap the race, because okay, that's, well, that's what I- that's not me. Precisely, because I'm trained to do that. I've been doing that for 24 okay. years. That's understandable. You just want to be comfortable with the horse that you've selected. So if there's a name in there that means something to you, if I'm there's a number, I'm gonna bet on all of them. You is that a thing? That. Why not? Don't is that a faux that. pas? I know we're paying is you ridiculous money here, but you do not have that much. For like two dollars? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I would love to know. We have ten seconds. What do you think I would bet on a horse? It'll be like one dollar. You have to bet ten dollars. What's the minimum? Two dollars. I will be betting two dollars on every horse. You bet ten dollars. I'll give you eight dollars right now. <laughs>